Maggie from Corkwood Knitting and Crafts and Half Size Mannequins and today I want to show you how you can start creating digital sewing patterns using free open source software. Now whether you're an experienced dressmaker or just learning to sew you may be aware that PDF sewing pattern digital downloads are becoming increasingly popular and although digital seems daunting to those trained in the more traditional ways of pattern cutting, there's a huge benefit to be gained from creating patterns in the digital space. There's very little paper waste. You don't need space to store the patterns and that's been a huge problem for a lot of people. You can print these files out as many times as you like. You can share them around with your friends in a way that you, co you couldn't do with traditional paper patterns, but the best advantage in my eyes is the ease and speed of adjustment and scaling. And what takes so much time with a pencil, scissors and a ruler can be done in a fraction of the time. I spent the last year investigating the use of free and open source software to help me create my sewing patterns. And today I'm using the free program Inkscape. And I have provided a link to the program download page just below this video for those of you who don't already have it. If you are already familiar with the program such, programs such as Adobe Illustrator, you'll find much which is similar and it won't be so much of a learning curve. But for those of you that are new to Vector Graphics, I've provided another link below for some great YouTube tutorials to get you up to speed. I'd recommend you have a basic knowledge of Inkscape before you try the next exercise. Inkscape is a vector drawing program and without describing the other wonderful things they do, vectors make it easy to create adjustable pattern lines that will scale up to any size you want without degradation. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to change a basic skirt block to an A-line skirt. This is a really simple exercise and I'm showing you just one way to do it. And there's plenty of other ways to do this. And as you work with Inkscape, I'm sure you will discover this for yourself. I'm working on a Windows PC. And for those of you working with Mac, you might need to refer to the Inkscape website for the alternative Mac commands. Today, I'm using a size picture of a standard half size skirt block as a tracing layer. This is quicker than starting from scratch, but it will sh show you what is possible. I've provided another link so you can download this block from my blog, but if you do have any digi digital patterns of your own, you can just use these instead. A couple of useful things to know before you start. Digital sewing patterns are normally sold, printed and shared as a file type with the suffix .pdf. Inkscape creates patterns first as file type SVG, which means scalable vector graphic. SVG fi files are highly adjustable and editable and at the end of the process, make sure you save the files as PDFs. And the reason for this, PDFs are much more stable during the printing process. And when you are working with Inkscape, it's very good practice to keep copies of both file types. So now we've got all that out of the way, now to work. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is set document properties. So go to the file, go to documents properties tabs, which is popped up over here. And I'm going to choose to work with A3 today. That's just to give myself a little bit more work room, but you can choose whatever you like. I'm then going to um, go over to the grids panel because I would like a one centimetre gr grid. So I press the new tab, grid units that I set as centimetres. I'm going to set the sp spacing as one centimetre in the X and Y directions. And I'm going to leave a major grid line every five centimeters so that's all looking good the next thing I'm going to do I'm, I'm I'm going to zoom to fit the page so I've got as much workspace as I can have and now I'm ready to import the picture that I'm going to use for tracing 
I now go over to file I go to import don't press open press import and I'm going to choose a skirt front block as the picture I'm going to work from so highlight that and open that leave all the page settings for PDF import as default and press OK the select tool has been automatically highlighted so I'm going to move my picture right into the middle of my workspace so that's all looking good and at this point I'm actually going to save a version of my work so I go to file I'm going to go to save as as this is the first save and I'm going to name it skirt in progress um, we're going to leave it as an Inkscape SVG. There, there are many other choices, but while we're working, we'll use the Inkscape native file and press save. So the, the next thing that we do is we're going to go to the layers panel. And this picture has gone into layer one. So just to remind myself, I'm going to highlight layer one right click I'm going to rename this layer I'm going to call it base picture layer and then I'm going to press rename I'm then actually going to lower the opacity of the, of the layer you can see here there's there's a layer opacity so I'm actually just to help me I'm going to knock this back somewhat just so it grays it out slightly this is just helpful for when you're working on top so this is choice I'm then going to go back up to the base picture layer I'm going to lock it so we can't accidentally do any any changes to it and then we're going to add a new layer and we're going to call this next one we're going to call it work layer one I think and then we're going to press add there, highlight it. Um, so now we're ready to go to work. So now I'm going to add a few guides to this to help me uh, do the next steps. So the way in Inkscape to do guides, it's really simple. You just go right over to the left hand side, hold down the left hand mouse button and drag and this first guide I'm putting right through the center of the dart now you can see this jumping about and this is due to an action called snapping so if we go over right to the right hand side enable snapping is on and I'm going to turn it off and when you turn it off you'll find it's actually much much easier to actually just place those guides precisely and I'm going to repeat that action and put a guide right over the center of the second dart so th there we are now we're ready to actually start drawing so first off I'm going to go over to my bezier tool this is draw bezier curves and straight lines and I'm going to be working from the left hand left hand section of the skirt pattern I'm going to start at the grid line and then I'm going to start drawing the first outline so um, if you want to change a curved line to a straight line it's actually shift L it should be shift L anyway <laughs> there we go and then we're going to continue drawing around the first section leaving out the dart area so when you see the marching ants you can see that piece has been finished and if you go over to your select tool on the left hand side you can see suddenly you've got these little arrows pop out so so this is a piece which can now be moved because you can see the cursor has a little cross and when I move this you can see that's actually a separate piece that I've made so now I'm going to repeat this process I'm going to work off the centre section so I'll go back to my bezier tool and then I'm going to just quickly 
pop around the center section of the skirt pattern and we have exactly the same thing here so um, we'll go to the select and transform tool just to make sure this is yep that's a nice separate piece we can really put that like anywhere we can just put put that there for the minute and then we're just going to draw the last one so go back to the, the bezier tool we're going to just do this last shape like that it can take a bit of practice but yes it's relatively simple and then we'll go back to our select tool and you'll see whatever whichever piece th that I highlight now now you can see that the problem with the base layer is sh shining through and I don't want to see it at this point so I'll go to the little eye icon in the layers panel and I've turned off the background so now I can just I can actually see all the separate pieces that I'm working with. Now we're go I'm going to start over on the left hand side. So it's at this point that we want to join all the pieces together to make them pivot into the new shape. So I'm doing this, I'm going to drag this over so it's touching the top of the centerpiece. So at this point I want to rotate and pivot it. So if I click with the select tool on a line a second time, you can see the handles change up here in this area. They, there's a blue highlight in them. And that's when you know that this piece will rotate, but you need to create a pivot point. So the pivot point in is this little cross down here. So you hold down with your left hand mouse button, you drag it up and put the pivot point as close as you can get to to the, to the top right and then you hold down on one of the handles and then you like pivot until it's sort of more or less in place now it's a little bit off so if you click on the line again the handles change and then you can just sort of move it in that direction so you get as close as you want there and then you highlight the last piece and we do the same thing we'll drag it over to be as close as we can get click on it again move the pivot cross just to the corner click on the handles move it up click on the line again just shuffle it slightly and there we have the pieces in their new configuration. So now what we're going to do, we're actually going to highlight work layer one and we're going to lock that now. So we're happy with, with those pieces. And these are the pieces that we're going to use as a tracing line for the final layer. This is where we're going to do all the blending that you would do um, with the paper pattern, but we're going to do it with the Bezier tool. So we have work layer one locked down, so we're going to add work layer two. It's actually renamed it itself, but you can name it what, what you like. So this is a layer that's going above, like work layer one. So with that highlighted, I'm just going to pick up the Bezier tool again. There we go. And I'm going to start tracing around. I'm going to start from the top left and then follow this. There we go, Shift L, because I want that as a straight line. And then here where there's blending, we're going to make this a curve. So it's close to a nice curve. Shift and L. And the same thing here, we want a, we want a blended curve. So you, you probably have to play with this a bit. 
there we go and then that's that's complete and when you turn off the little eye you can see that you've made your final shape for the skirt piece At this point here I might um, want to change the line so I can see it a little better so I'll go over to the select tool I'm going to put that in the middle of the page now I'm then going to go to the fill and stroke panel and I'm just going to slightly thicken that stroke so I can see it a little better you can change the colour if, if you want in stroke paint and do all the other things but now I think like we're ready to save that as uh, Inkscape SVG just so that when you do further e editing you have your work just just as you finished it here so you save save as so it's skirt in progress so we'll replace that with what we've done there and that's ready to carry on to the next lesson where we can add some little extras in so that's the ending to the first first part of this uh, exercise and if you're new to digital pattern cutting and you've got to this stage you've done really really well um, anyway so the next video we're going to concentrate on adding a few details su such as seam allowance and all the extra bits anyway so hopefully we'll see you then bye